thank you for challenging us for the near future. And Adover uh, Abba, who uh, Adisha Rabani, Mumkhel Avtachat Meida, Mankal Sky Cure, Hevrat Ezneka Mesapeket Pitronot, Avtachat Machirim Nayadim. Adiu Moemovilim Abultim, Bechinuch, Vacharat Kohadam Echuti, Betuma Cyber Shel Medinatenu. As Kir Gamshu Melamed Bevetsefer Tihon, Vetal Midav Nimzaim Poitanu. וזה חשוב. מגיעות לו מחיאות כפיים, כן. עדי שותף לחזון ומימוש הבגרות בסייבר היוצא לפועל בימים אלו. כבר אמרתי מורה בבית הספר התיכון אוהל שם ברמת גן, ובמהלך 15 השנים האחרונות מהווה דמות מפתח בבניית קורסי הסייבר בקהילת המודיעין. בעברו עדי ניהל בחברת הזנק שעסקה בתחום הבטחת הרשת ונרכשה על ידי IBM ב-2007. היה אחראי על ההבטחה של מרבית מוצרי התוכנה של IBM המפותחים ברחבי העולם ורשם פטנטים רבים בתחומו. עדי ידבר על Wi-Fi Gate, How Careers Expose Us to Wi-Fi Attacks. בבקשה. אוקיי. Okay. Uh, so what I want to talk to you about today is these devices. How many of you are currently holding a mobile device in their hand? A lot of people, right? So it's not just holding them. Obviously, a lot of us have them in our back pockets and on the bag. Specifically in Israel, uh, we are uh, common to be a bit more rude so we can hold them and use them uh, during presentations. Uh, please don't do it now because there were uh, a kind of attack that happened here, which I will illustrate uh, later. Um, in SkyCure, what we do is we focus on this problem, specifically for organizations. And as we see today, looking at the actual threats, uh, the current solutions are inadequate in actually addressing those threats. And there is a huge technology barrier here, and this is indeed a very complicated task to do. And at the end of the day, what we see is that mobile is actually the best entry to hack into the organizations, uh, to hack into the employees of the organizations and leverage their devices to perform other more malicious activities. Um, today I'm going to uh, disclose a new type of vulnerability that we uh, have discovered and we performed the test as I said here in the audience. The problem talks about a known problem uh, called Wi-Fi attacks. Generally speaking we know that connecting to Wi-Fi networks uh, might put us on risk for many uh, different types of attacks. Some of them are many in the middle, a well-known concept. However, there are two main challenges to perform a successful many in the middle attack. Uh, in most cases, when we are talking about Wi-Fi, the attacker needs to be close by. So a person in China cannot perform an attack on you at this point of time. This specific attack, I mean. The second element is that the user needs to do something. You need to connect to a Wi-Fi network in order for a Wi-Fi attack to be performed on your device. And what we did a couple of months ago is we disclosed a first iOS malware that is persistent and can be done through a remote location. So while we, now we know that these types of attacks are not necessarily local. What I'm going to disclose today is the second element. whether you actually need to do something on your device. If your device is currently in your bag, can you still be under attack? And this is what we identified. So the challenge is, you know, thinking from the hacker perspective, is to try to hack into someone that hardly ever connects to Wi-Fi networks. And actually, this is very simple. Uh, there is a, a, a great feature in mobile devices called AutoConnect. When you go back to your home or to your office, the device automatically connects to the Wi-Fi networks that exist there. That means that as an attacker, if I can just anticipate or guess which networks you ever connected to, and if I would create such networks here in this uh, hall, then in this auditorium, then your devices will automatically connect to my system and I will be able to perform all the known attacks on your device. So this is somehow known, but there is an even uh, uh, more challenging problem. I met with an executive of a large organization said that he specifically hardly ever connected to Wi-Fi networks. And by hardly ever, he means 
He only connected to the Wi-Fi network of his office. So that means that if it's not a directed attack on any specific uh, organization, I would not be able to guess the Wi-Fi network, that specific single Wi-Fi network on his device. However, what we came to learn is that his device actually have more Wi-Fi networks configured on. And what we saw that in practice, the mobile carriers themselves are capable of setting uh, configuration on our devices. Those configurations were created uh, mainly to allow phone calls and uh, data uh, connection over the 3G or 4G network. However, this technology could allow them, and in practice they used this technology, to specify Wi-Fi networks on our devices. So for example, if I take an iOS device, I can connect to it and see all the different bundles, all the different carrier settings from all the carriers around the world that have been set on my device. Uh, this is an example for a leading carrier in Israel. I will no, not name it here. Um, and we see specifically in red here the Wi-Fi network that it automatically configured on its users' devices. Now, I do not know exactly why this carrier is using this. Uh, in the US, uh, there are known carriers that also provide uh, Wi-Fi networking. Uh, this allows them to do offload of the 3G or 4G expensive data plans to Wi-Fi. So AT&T have a lot of hotspots around the world, and many other vendors are doing that as well. And, and again, the issue is clear. If I create such a Wi-Fi here in the audience, any user of that carrier will automatically be connected to my Wi-Fi, allowing me to perform attacks on their devices, meaning seeing all of their sensitive information, stealing their credentials, in many cases viewing their email credentials, and as you know, uh, hacking into your email account is actually giving me the secret key to your entire digital life, because every time you forget an email for an, uh, the password for another service, you always have the option of, I forgot my password, please send an, email to my, send an email to my email account to recover that password or to create a new one. We actually seen this in the wild. Uh, one of our customers had uh, an iOS device in Brooklyn, and we got an alert that uh, a malicious activity was done on the network they connected to. Uh, we started to look at that activity, and we saw that indeed it was one of the bigger carriers, the, a Wi-Fi network associated with one of the biggest carriers in the U.S., and we got the location of the attack. And at first, what we thought is that someone also connected to that Wi-Fi network, to the legitimate Wi-Fi network, and performed attacks on that network. But after looking a, a bit on this a bit more closely, we saw that that carrier have a, has a Wi-Fi locator service. So you are capable of going online and seeing all the places of the hotspots around the world for that specific uh, 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 Wi-Fi name. And what we saw is that the closest Wi-Fi that exists under that name was seven blocks away, out of the reachability of the Wi-Fi of the iOS device of that customer. This means that someone created a Wi-Fi code under that name and performed that activity on it. Now, I have to admit that we are not fully sure whether the attacker fully understood the ramifications of this attack. They might have guessed that if they will create a Wi-Fi under that name, many people connect. However, in practice, any bypasser standing in that area that is a user of that carrier was automatically attacked. So we wanted to put a system to the test. What we actually did is we took a D-Link counter. This is uh, equipment that cost about 100 shekels, uh, $30. And we placed some software on it, configured it correctly, and created several Wi-Fi's according to the carriers that are listed here in Israel or the carriers that are uh, in the US or other places that we know people came here from. Uh, we placed it in the morning. Uh, uh, some of you might notice that you can recognize. Uh, if you look uh, behind you, uh, you will see Asaf, Asaf. Um, and uh, uh, we placed it here. At first, we placed it in the entrance to the small show uh, to the small show term itself, and then to the, to the entrance of this room. And we tried to capture the amount of people that automatically connected to our uh, devices. Uh, now, it's very important to clear we did not perform any attack on you. So we invested a lot of efforts 
to uh, make sure that once you automatically connect to the network and we prove that we are capable of attacking the device, then we disallow any internet access. So if you manually try to connect to those networks, then you would not get no, you will not be able to join the network or get internet access and nothing and no data will be leaked out of your device. However, an attacker would be able to do it seamlessly well, without your knowledge. These are the numbers. Uh, we placed it at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, and by 10.30, uh, uh, 450 people uh, connected to the network. Uh, the, the, the router actually uh, stayed on for additional while. So as I was updating the numbers, uh, the numbers kept on growing. So what should we do? Uh, this is a tough problem because it's a problem that is by the design of the internet. These are the most interesting problems for me as a security expert, but the worst problems for users because problems with the design of the internet are much harder to solve. So in practice, I don't have you know, the best uh, solution for you as, as consumers. Um, again, we do try to solve these problems for organizations, but not for regular people. Um, one uh, a small action you can do is if you're using an iOS device, you can simply close the Wi-Fi on the device if you're not using it. However, that is uh, somehow problematic, right? Because when you go back home, you want to open it and then you'll forget to close it again when you leave home and so on. Uh, another option is to use a mobile firewall. Um, uh, there are some companies that are focused on consumers that uh, I really like, and they provide some protection against some of the threats uh, listed here. Uh, I really like Onava, which is an Israeli startup. Um, the CEO is also a friend of mine, um, which is not that weird, right? Um, if you're a carrier or, or Wi-Fi network provider, you need to make sure that when you provide a Wi-Fi, you want to take a firewall in place so that all the clients that will connect to it, whether they are mobile or not, will automatically enjoy a, a, a seamless security model that will protect against the current threats that we see out there in the wild. Um, that's it. Information uh, has just been uploaded to our blog. So if you want more technical information or any, uh, you want to reference this, uh, you can check out blog at skycure.com or follow us on Twitter. We constantly uh, update uh, more and more types of research of this kind. Thank you very much.